Okay, let's continue um, with the section on, on vectors and scalars. Some guiding questions. A distinguish between direction and sense of a vector. Direction and sense, what's, what's going on there? How should we distinguish between vectors and scalars when writing? Okay, when you're writing and also when you're reading. Um, and then describe the parallelogram law of vector addition or combination. Okay, so these are just some questions to guide us. Okay, so let's get going. A vector quantity V. Well, notice that when we speak about vectors uh, in this textbook, and probably in, in a lot of other textbooks, they are represented in boldface. Okay, boldface. Okay, we'll get back to that in a second. Um, so let's look at this, this vector representation. Okay, so V represents the bold, the, the vector, because it's in bold. Okay, that means that there is a, a magnitude component and a direction, a directional component. But now let's, let's zoom in a little bit to this matter of direction. So here they define direction. Um, I want you to take note of this. Direction is defined really as the orientation of this line with respect to some reference direction. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Uh, meaning the direction here refers simply to how, how you draw this line, that angle of that line, whereas the sense of the vector is refers to the where the arrow is pointing. Okay, so if you say, uh, if you put the arrow there, then that is the sense of the vector. Whereas if you put the arrow there, it is in the opposite sense. Okay, so, so let's just clarify here. Um, if we speak about the direction of a vector, we really are talking about the orientation of this line. Okay, without, without the arrowheads, right? It's just, okay, that's the orientation of that vector with respect to some reference point. So there's you, it's an angle measured with respect to some reference point. But then you need to say also what the sense is. That's the sense. That's the orientation or the direction, and that is the sense. Okay. So maybe they're getting nitpicky, but just, just to know what they're referring to when they say... Uh, but in, for all practical purposes, when we say direction... We are we we are kind of referring to this whole thing, okay? But just know that in future, if they say the sense, they are talking about where the which direction the arrow is pointing, okay? All right. Hope that's hope that's clear. Then the next thing is writing. Okay. So l like I said earlier, in the textbook, if it's in boldface, then it's a vector. If it's in light face italic type like that, light face and italic, then it it refers to the magnitude of the vector. I guess you could also write it like this with the bold, okay, and then it's got the two bars on either side. They both refer to magnitude of the vector, okay. Um, but now when you're writing it. When you're writing it, it, obviously it's difficult to write a bold face when you're referring to a vector. So when we're writing vectors, uh, we can write it in one of two ways, either with an underline, uh, okay, with a, a, a little line underneath, like that, or with an arrow at the above it. Okay, so either like this, maybe you can just put an arrow like that, or you can put a line underneath it. These refer to vectors. And then if you write it like that, that refers to the magnitude of that vector. And I guess you could also write it like this. You know, you could perhaps put two bars on either side. But just make sure that you know exactly what you're referring to um, when, you're, when you're reading and when you're writing. Okay. Then, okay, so working with vectors... So we've already discussed this. The direction of the vector may be measured by an angle theta from some known reference. Okay, 
we already discussed that. Now let's look at this. Um, vectors must obey the parallelogram law of combination. Okay, so we've got two free vectors here. Remember, a free vector you can a free vector has a magnitude, remember, and a direction, but you can place it anywhere. Right? It's a it's a free vector. Okay? So if we want to add these two vectors to each other, they must obey the parallelogram law of combination, meaning we put them tail to tail and we complete the parallelogram and V becomes the vector sum, the vector sum of V1 and V2. All right, so this is the parallelogram, the parallelogram law of combination. You can also use the triangle rule, the head to tail method by triangle law. So we take this vector and we put it put its tail on the head and we get the vector sum V. Okay? So these are the two methods. Now very 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 importantly uh, the magnitude of V Right, so we know that in vector, uh, if we're adding up vectors, the vector sum is V1 plus V2. If we write it, it's like that. is V1 vector plus V2 in vector form, right? Now, this is not the same as saying the magnitude of V is equal to the magnitude of 1 plus the magnitude of 2. You, you can't say that, okay? So, this is what they're saying here. Be very careful. Uh, it is, this only is valid when we are dealing with vectors. Okay? Alright. Um, when we subtract vectors, we can say V1 minus V2. And remember, all that, v, all that minus V2 is, is V2 in the opposite direction. So V2 would be like that. So V1 plus V2, right, would give us uh, this result, that vector sum there. But then if we wanted to get V1 minus V2, all we do is we flip V2 in that direction and we get V prime. Okay. All right, and so that is subtraction. Okay, see you in the next one.